Welcome to our final FTB Cover 5 of the offseason. But don't fret. From here, we're handing the baton to Coach Caduti, host of our signature film study series. He'll carry us to the September 1st finish line. For our finale, we're listing the five most irreplaceable Nittany Lions on Penn State's 2022 roster. To clarify, that doesn't necessarily mean the best Penn State players or the players with the most pro potential. We're talking irreplaceable. The guys Penn State cannot afford to be without in 2022. Number five, Curtis Jacobs. This year, the U in LBU stands for unknown, Curtis Jacobs being the lone exception. Not only is linebacker Penn State's thinnest unit heading into fall camp, it's also a position in flux from a philosophical standpoint now that Manny Diaz is pulling the strings. Slimmer, faster, fly around the field, less bare-knuckled alley fights, and more precision strikes from all directions. This impending physical and cerebral transition and the potential bumpy learning curve attached to it makes it imperative that junior linebacker Curtis Jacobs do more than just stay on the field. No, he's got to consistently generate the type of game-changing hits, sacks, strips, and deflections to get the defense off the field. No pressure. The good news for Jacobs as he switches from starting Sam linebacker to the will this season is that Brandon Smith, the guy he's replacing, set the bar low enough for a limbo. Despite having to constantly straddle the fence between run and pass responsibilities as the Sam, Jacobs applied QB pressure on 20.4% of all pass rush opportunities last year. Comparatively, Smith only managed to harass the QB on 18.4% of his total pass rush reps. While Jacobs isn't the same superhuman blend of size and speed like Will predecessors Smith and Micah Parsons, he's still a plus-plus athlete with sideline-to-sideline -side range. The biggest adjustment Jacobs must overcome in this new role will be the challenge of diagnosing plays and trusting his eyes inside the box. As a Sam linebacker, Jacobs' vision was rarely obstructed. Not the case at the Will, where things are almost always cloudy. What's promising is that Jacobs did grow right in front of our eyes as a Will linebacker during his lone start at the position. Here, in the first half of the Outback Bowl, Jacobs' slight post-snap delay in the box causes him to be a nanosecond late from registering a tackle for loss. Roughly 30 minutes later, in the second half, Jacobs displays extreme discipline in staying gap sound, forcing the ball carrier to bounce wide as Jacob mirrors his stride to limit this to a minimal gain. Number 4. Adisa Isaac It's easy to forget that at this time last season, Adisa Isaac was slated to be what Temple transfer Arnold Ebikati ultimately ended up becoming. A tough to block, impossible to ignore, relentless edge rusher that made life hell for opposing QBs. Forced to feast on the table scrap reps left behind by starters Etor Gross Matos, Shaka Tony, and Jason Owe in 2019 and 2020, respectively, Isaac still compiled four sacks and 16 stops and was primed for a breakout 2021. But, because of an undisclosed non-football related injury, that breakout broke down. Assuming Isaac's recovery is complete by August, then he'll be a surefire starter week one, and, more importantly, Penn State's lone semi-proven pass rush threat. We say semi-proven because even though he's James Franklin's most experienced edge option, Isaac has only played in excess of 30 snaps in a game once. In a limited two-year sample size, though, Isaac showed off his ability to bend, corner, and hide his chest extremely well reducing the surface area blockers have to work with. Isaac's hips are extremely fluid, evidenced here in his go-to dip-and-rip move. Isaac possesses sneaky play strength for a sub-250-pound defensive end, too, which makes him a multi-trick pass rusher and a serviceable run stopper on first and second downs. Isaac's ability to meet or even surpass our lofty expectations from last preseason would lessen the burden for Penn State's talented but young edge rushers to be anything more than complementary pieces this season as they continue to develop. Number 3. Landon Tangwall Make no mistake, Landon Tangwall, the beefy gem of Penn State's 2021 recruiting class, has the potential to be an all-conference interior offense lineman this season, and one of those rare three years and peace out pro prospects following the 2023 college campaign. But that's not why he's on our list. No, the reason we included the youngest of our irreplaceable Lions is because, figuratively speaking, Tangwall is the most trustworthy wad of chewing gum James Franklin has if, heaven forbid, he needs to patch up any cracks at either left or right tackle this season. 
prior to finding his forever home at guard in the Outback Bowl, Tangwall started at left tackle when Penn State was in a flu-stricken bind versus Rutgers. And you know what? Even though Tangwall's frame doesn't quite fit the build-a-tackle mold, he more than held his own in his college debut. Greg Schiano and his merry band of choppers threw the kitchen sink at the true freshman, and Tangwall handled every wrinkle like an upperclassman. Blitzes, stunts, you name it. Eventually, Rucker stopped being cute and got into Tangwall's chest, taking advantage of his lack of arm length. And while it wasn't always pretty or technically sound, Tangwall's elite strength stymied most of these bull rushers and power moves, even when he could only anchor on one leg. At this point, judging solely from what we saw on tape in 2021, Tangwall is Penn State's best bet insurance policy at tackle compared to Bryce Effner and Jimmy Crist, the only returning non-starters to see snaps or any of the yet-to-be-unwrapped true freshman options. Number 2. Carker Washington While Jahan Dotson mesmerized us all on the main stage, commanding our attention with his aerial brilliance, route-running mastery, and fly-strip hands, Parker Washington put on a hell of a sideshow the past two years. Not that Washington's exploits went unnoticed, but you must admit, they've kind of been underappreciated. Through his initial two seasons on campus, Washington has hauled in a school record 100 receptions. His 1,309 total receiving yards trails only what Chris Godwin put up in 2014 and 2015, while Washington's 10 touchdowns falls one score shy of Allen Robinson's 11, all of which came in 2012. Despite standing a mere 5 foot 9 inches tall, Washington's thick but shifty lower half makes him a post-catch problem for defenses. In 2021, Washington forced 16 missed tackles, the most of any receiver in the James Franklin era. Washington's satisfactory speed, coupled with his precise route running, provides Mike Yersich with a winning chess piece in isolation passing concepts, a cornerstone of his offense. Oh, almost forgot. Washington has really, really good ball skills too. Like designer brand boutique ball skills. Pre-drama queen OBJ ball skills. Yeah, this, this dude's unreal. Cram all those superlatives together and you got a day two NFL draft pick at worst if Washington ducks out of State College after the 2022 season. But none of those aforementioned attributes makes Washington irreplaceable, though. The reason Washington's on-field presence is vital has less to do with him and more to do with the guy throwing him the football, Sean Clifford. Of the many differences between Clifford's three-year reign at starting QB and Trace McSorley's three-year reign, One of the most glaring is Clifford's dependence on his number one receiver, illustrated here in the percentage of total targets thrown. As you can see, Clifford's tunnel vision has only intensified over the years. And while Penn State's receiver room is deep and chock full of talented toys for Clifford's Van Wilder season, Washington is the sole target he's developed a true rapport with, and therefore the likely candidate to become Clifford's safety blanket in 2022. Number one. P.J. Mustafer. If life was fair, roughly one month from now, P.J. Mustafer would be duct taped to a goalpost or vacuuming styrofoam peanuts out of his new SUV or rocking a hideous Friar Tuck haircut or subjected to some other antiquated form of NFL rookie hazing. But as our thinning hairlines and expanding belt lines remind us daily, life isn't fair. So he's here, back for another year at Penn State after a wicked knee injury abbreviated Mustafer's promising 2021 campaign. In early June, James Franklin told reporters that he expects Mustafer to be ready for the Nittany Lions Week 1 opener at Purdue. And that's good news, especially since Mustafer's strength, stopping the run, will be the projected weakness of Penn State's overall defense. That's what makes Mustafer our pick for most irreplaceable Penn State player. Because for the Lions to exceed preseason expectations, P.J. needs to get back to his old gap-clogging, block-consuming self by September. Last offseason, Mustafer purposely ballooned up to 330 pounds to better withstand double teams. What's funny is that the extra mass didn't really help in that regard as much as Mustafer and Penn State's coaches would have predicted. But it also didn't take away from the aspects of P.J.'s game that make him great, namely short area quickness, the ability to play low and with leverage, and Mustafer's unrivaled, explosive get-off. Because moving pictures don't do it justice, we decided to take a few screenshots to illustrate PJ's post-snap burst. I mean, just look at these things. Mustafer's D-line neighbors are still in their stance while PJ is breathing the same air as a guard or center. And if you're wondering what happens when Mustafer gets these types of massive head starts, well, here you go. 
Finally, considering Penn State lost seven key contributors from its top 10 national defense, it can't be quantified, but it also can't be understated how much Mustafa's return and return to form will mean from an intangible leadership identity sports cliche perspective. 